Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over a 2020 Ram 1500 Bighorn and compare it to a 2020 Ram 1500 Warlock. So, really, what this is gonna serve as is a comparison to the classic to the new body style, I cannot talk for some reason, but a huge shout out and thank you to the Dodge Ram and Sandy for providing us with both trucks. Link to their inventory in the description below. Let's just get right into it. Now let's go into the hoods of both of the trucks. So first and foremost, they both have a naturally aspirated 5.7 liter Hemi V8, but then there's some things that are a little bit different. So this one has the e-torque, making the fuel economy a little bit better. You're gonna get 17 around town and 22 on the highway, whereas the Warlock, just has a regular Hemi, so you're gonna get 15 around town and then 21 on the highway. Power outputs are identical. 395 horsepower, 410 pound-feet of torque, and same thing there. Now, you do get an extra 130 pound-feet of torque just off of the line with this e-torque system. Zero to 60 times on both of them are right around six seconds. This one's about 6.1, and I think this one's about 6.2, 6.3 seconds. So just a little bit slower, but that's probably because the truck just weighs just slightly more, but pretty much everything's the same. Oh, and they also both have the same eight-speed automatic under the hoods of each of them so um yeah that's uh that's what's under the hood now let's go over the front ends of both of the trucks let's start with the big horn and the new body style so you do get the badging there on the side of the hood just saying 1500 5.7 liter hemi and then you've got the halogen bulbs full chrome for this particular big horn parking sensors all along the front and just in general it's kind of got like this smooth look to it whereas the warlock has some parts from the old rebel so you got this cool like decal at the top little like led lights right there and then the lights themselves are halogen bulbs fog lights just down below and then you got tow hooks at the front but just in general it kind of has like more of like a squared off like boxy look whereas this one's a little bit rounder so it's kind of like you got like the distinctive ram design this one's kind of like a dodge charger and then like this truck went and had a baby and then that's what came out so um there's the front end now let's go over the tire and rim setup. We've got 18 inch rims on the Bighorn. On the Warlock, we've got 20 inch rims, 275 millimeter tires, 275 millimeter tires. So the tires are the same width. In terms of the design, I do prefer the design on the Warlock. I think the rims just look a little bit nicer compared to what's on this Bighorn, but the Bighorn rims do look good. Now notice no fender flares. We do get fender flares on this particular Warlock. Hemi 5.7 liter, Ram 1500. Got the Ram badge right here, and then you can put mud flaps there. And other than that though, trailer mirrors on this one. This one has the regular mirrors. It says Warlock on the back and let's head out back. Here is our key fob for the Bighorn. You have your unlock at the top lock in the middle and the remote start and well, we're remote starter so you guys can hear what she sounds like and they, they sound identical by the way. So there's what a 5.7 liter Hemi sounds like. Now that that is done, we're going to unlock the truck. And now that the truck is unlocked, we can actually lower down the bed itself. So it is slow lowering, which is a nice little feature. No bed liner, but you can get that aftermarket pretty easily in most trucks. You got this window back there with the light at the top. No LED bed lights or anything like that. Now the tailgate is very, very light to lift up. Super easy to get into place. Here's our key fob on the Warlock. You've just got unlock and lock and well, nothing else. So. Now that that's all done, we are going to open up the tailgate on this, and it is not slow lowering. Definitely a little bit heavier, a little bit more on the robust side of things. No bed liner on this one. Still got the cargo light at the top. No LED bed lights, sadly. And then lifting up the tailgate, it is, well, it's heavier than the big horn. <laughs> Now let's open up the door in the Bighorn. Now look at the door panel. We've got this nice soft touch here. Leather down below with the stitching. And then here are the seats themselves. Really nice premium cloth, really soft feeling. And this one has the crew cab, so it is a bigger back door. Under the seats, you can pick them up for some extra storage and have the uh, floor mats kind of uh, fall down over everything. And then there are ice buckets in this as well. And then here in the little center console, you've got cup holders at the top. You got a couple little areas for the USBs and then a power outlet down below. But the biggest thing I want you guys to take away, oh, and there's a little cup holder, is just look at the materials in here. Just look at the fit and finish and all of it, just like how nice it is. Now coming over to the Warlock, the door panel, I mean, you can see. Yeah. 
So, we've got that, and then you've got the seats. Now, I really like these seats in general on the Warlock, just kind of like the look of them, but they don't feel as nice as what's in the Bighorn. Now, this is the quad cap, so it is smaller in the back. Lifting up the seat, decent amount of storage space. You got a couple cup holders down there, no little center console area thing, and well, Ah. Now before we go into the front of the Bighorn, I just want to mention this one has the power folding mirrors, which I do prefer on the new body style. Opening up the door panel here for the front, just again, look at the materials on the door panel, just so much nicer with the fit and finish, just the look, all of it, just a lot nicer. But you notice that functionality is identical, those mirrors do power fold in. And then the seats of the front, really nice looking, really premium looking in general, just like a really solid seat. They are power adjustable. There's your pedal layout at the bottom. Power adjustable pedals, you got your light controls right there as well. And then the steering wheel is manually adjustable, but there's one more look before we head over to the Warlock. And before we pop in the Warlock, trailer mirrors, which they are not power folding. Now look at the door panel again, just not as nice with the material. Similar layout, similar controls, just not as nice. Here are the seats at the front of the Warlock. And again, I like the look of them. They just don't feel as nice. They're manually adjustable. There is your pedal layout at the bottom. Controls for the lights, manual adjustments on the steering wheel, and yeah. To start off the big horn, it does have a push button start. Just press that, say big horn in the center, and everything will come to life. Quickly looking at the steering wheel, it's very like smooth all around the steering wheel itself. Cruise controls on this side, you got your gear selector on the other side. This is a little center stack, and you got the voice commands right there in the middle. But again, just remember kind of like the material looks. And then the stock for the turn signal the windshield wipers is right there. Coming into this little center stack, kind of remember how like nice this looks. You've got the RPMs on the left side, on the right side you've got the speed, and then you've got the little center gauge, which you can basically just scroll through to give you different bits of information on the truck. Just has like a really nice look to it though. Now here is the infotainment system. I'm gonna pop it in reverse. You guys can see the backup camera, just how that looks from a resolution standpoint. And then also you can zoom in on the receiver hitch. Kind of remember that for later. With the rest of the infotainment system, touch response time on it is really good. I mean, it's just really easy to get into the different menus. And then notice that you do get heated seats, heated steering wheel. And then this also does come with dual zone climate. Now there's some analog controls down below. Got the analog controls for the radio, for the dual zone climate, for the heated seats, heated steering wheel, all that kind of stuff. Down here, we've got our controls for the parking sensors, your tow haul mode, stability control, the trailer brakes are integrated into this area as well. Over in this area, this is a little dial shifter. And that's for your two-wheel drive, your four-wheel auto, four-wheel high, four-wheel low, your true neutral, and the auto stop start that comes with the e-torque, some uh, extra storage, a couple of USBs in that little area, and putting my mic aside, we've got the center console here. Opening it up, you got a little USB in there. Measuring tables on the back. This part slides backwards and forwards. You've got these little areas where you can hold your phone. There is a full power outlet at the bottom. And then finally, well ish finally, coming over to the glove box, it is a dual glove box, which has a decent amount of storage space. And then we'll finish things up at the top of the truck. You've got a little sunglass holder up here, universal garage door openers, and the rear window, if I can find the button, is power sliding. Now to start up the Warlock, we actually do have to put the key in and twist it. it. Says Ram 1500. Screen pops on pretty much instantly. Now looking at the steering wheel, the material is just not as nice on the outside of the steering wheel. Do have your voice command phone controls right here, and then this is all for the little center stack. This is the gear selector on the side, and then the cruise control just down below. Got the same stock for the turn signal and windshield wipers. Just again, doesn't look as premium. Coming into the center here. Gauge cluster has the same functionality and you got a little screen in the center that shows you basically the same information. It just doesn't look as nice as what's in the big horn. I've got the little center screen, pop it in reverse quickly so you can see the backup camera. No zoom function and the resolution is pretty similar, it's just not as nice. And then with the rest of the screen, functionality on it's super similar. I mean, response time on it is pretty much identical. Do get dual zone climate, but no heated and, or sorry, heated seats and heated steering wheel. You've got your controls for the radio right here, and then you've got the analog climate controls just down below. That's for your parking sensors, your tow haul mode, stability control, and then the trailer brakes. This is the dial shifter for the eight-speed automatic, and then you got your drive line select just right there. Pretty similar, except you don't get a four-wheel auto. Little 12 volt down there, and then opening this up, some extra storage, and then you get this little random storage pocket, and then a USB. That was kind of awkward what I did, but. Coming over here, we've got the center console, which also doubles as a seat. Got a little coin holder right here, a couple USBs and an auxiliary. Cup holders at the front. And like I said, it does double as a seat. There is no storage underneath the seat. And then you still get a dual glove box in the Warlock. 
just like you get in the Bighorn. And then let's finish things up at the top. So notice that there is no control for the power rear setting, power rear setting window because well, it's manually adjustable, but you still get the little lights here at the top and that's all. Let's quickly get into pricing. So the Warlock stickers for about $45,000. This Ram 1500 Bighorn stickers for about $50,000. Now, yes, the Warlock is usually discounted a little bit more than the Bighorn. So just kind of take that into consideration. But I mean, just from a sticker price perspective, you're about $5,000 difference. Now, if it was up to me and I were to choose one, I'm gonna be honest, guys, I would go for the Ram 1500 Bighorn with the new body style. I know it's a little bit more money, but the truck is just so much nicer. The technology's nicer, the fit and finish, just everything about the truck is so much nicer. It's like a huge step from this truck to, or sorry, from this truck to that truck. It's just like a huge step, night and day difference. So that's kind of what I'd go for. But I want you guys to let me know in the comment section below which one you would go for. As always, a huge shout out. Thank you to the Dodge Ram store in Sandy for providing us with both trucks. Check out them, turn the link below. I will see all of you in that next video.